Hi, my name is Frank. Welcome to Vinyl Dance. This is the segment where we check out cool music rooms from across the vinyl community around the world. All right, Chris Wright. My name is Chris from the Montreal area, and this is my music room. And what a freaking awesome music room this is. Check this one out. He says, I began work on this room about 15 years ago. It's been a slow process as time and money have become available. Totally get it. That's the way you got to do things, right? Some of the best things in life are things we chip away at for years. He says, I did all the designing, renovating, painting, and building all the furniture except for the seating. I designed and built my own record drawers that can be stacked like blocks. That's cool, man. He says, I've installed RGB Wi-Fi controlled lights that can also interact with the music. I'm gonna check that out here in a little more detail. We're gonna come back to his letter. But I love the look, like the lights and the, the atmosphere that creates. I think that looks awesome. I think it looks awesome. Uh, he writes, the audio equipment is not too fancy. It includes some Pioneer monitors bought at half price, a salvaged NAD314 amp that was rebuilt, an NAD tape deck that he found for 90 bucks. He has two Gemini PT1002 turntables with Ortofone red cartridges that are probably the best 1200 copies that exist at half the price. That's interesting because when I was looking at the pictures of this music room, at least from the distance, I did think those were 1200s. And of course, I'm a huge fan of the Technics SL 1200 turntables. It's my main turbo. Turbo. <laughs> it's my name. It's my main turntable. And I absolutely love it. Uh, he writes, my collection dabbles in almost all genres, from rock to electro, pop to classical, reggae to Latin, country to jazz. My biggest loves are hardcore punk, old school hip hop and trip hop, and alternative rock. I've included a chart I made recently for fun using info from my Discogs collection. So this is all of Chris's record collection broken down. It says my collection is 50% vinyl, 50% CD. There are pictures of the evolution of the room as well as my Lego builds on my Flickr page. But I do dig this music room and those storage shelves that Chris built, the ones that stack on top of each other. Just looking at this picture here with the records, I'm assuming those are the, the cubes he was talking about. Looks great. I dig his taste in music. Uh, I see SNFU. I see the Trick or Treat soundtrack. I see the Offspring. So some some good stuff there. That hobby room in the distance also looks amazing. This Lego room, I believe. So I find that record collectors we have more than one hobby slash obsession, right? It's like record collecting. It's movies. It's Lego. It's home renos. Uh, it's whatever. And I've already said I love the lighting in this room and the overall look. Like, obviously, Chris just spent so much time perfecting everything. The colors look awesome. I love the, the bricks or the faux brick on the wall, whatever that may be. Chris, man, thank you very much for saying this over. Awesome space. Okay, the hits don't stop here at 33 is the hits don't stop. Check this one out. This is from Brad. And he writes, my name is Brad Rose. I'm 38 years old. I live in Kissimmee, Florida. Kissimmee. I hope I said that right. I love that name. Kissimmee. Kissimmee, Florida. Kissimmee, Florida. He says, I've been collecting for about five years now. And this is hard to believe. Brad has accomplished all this in five years, which is amazing, right? That just shows passion and dedication just to getting her done and getting it right. So he says, I've been collecting for about five years now. Before that, I had no clue about stereo equipment or anything. I didn't even know what a reel-to-reel -reel was. Within the last five years, I've basically taught myself a lot from YouTube and asking questions in Facebook groups. He says, some of my gear includes a Denon DP45F turntable, uh, Emotiva power amp, Yamaha preamp, tons, tons of great gear here. He says, I listen to a lot of vinyl and enjoy making my own mixed tapes on reel to reel. My daughter enjoys listening to music too. My room is located upstairs above the garage. It's our only room upstairs. So that's cool. It's got a little bit of separation from the rest of the house, particularly with younger kids. My kids are 11 and 14, but I'm in the basement. They're on the second floor. So there's a floor separating us. And even at nighttime, I sometimes 
you know, get a knock from upstairs saying, turn it down, Dad. Just because we have air vents here, right? And the sound still moves throughout. Um, but being on his own floor, hopefully that helps with the sound separation and uh, and everything. Uh, what else did you say here? He says the back wall is basically extra gear and my workbench. So again, equally impressive to the last room. It's just got so much stuff here. Like, look at the tapes. Look at the CDs. Anyway, I love this space. Love the fact that uh, Brad is getting his kids into this. I try to expose my kids to music and my stuff as well, but I don't push it on them, right? Like kids have to have their own lives and develop their own interests and whatnot. And your daughter is super cute. I assume that is her trolls record. I love it, man. And that's the key to getting kids and young people into this, right? Like when my kids were small, if I said you must listen to Metallica or you must listen to Black Sabbath, it wouldn't go over well. So I, you know, maybe got like a Disney soundtrack or later like a Lady Gaga stuff. So you reel them in by relating to them and making it relatable to them. So that is what Brad is doing here. So more power to you, man. This is awesome. Brad, thank you for sending your stuff over. Place looks wicked. Do people still say wicked? I don't even know. Glenn, this comes from Glenn. Glenn says he is 61 and lives in Ontario, Canada. And he writes, I've enjoyed your videos for quite some time. Awesome. Thank you very much, Glenn. He says, your easygoing nature and knowledge is a nice combination. Awesome. I'm glad you dig everything this channel has to offer. He says, I have a couple of systems in the bunker. The bunker. He says, I've recently recreated the first system I ever bought as a teenager back in the 70s, consisting of JVC components with realistic speakers from good old Radio Shack. Radio Shack used to sell some really good stuff, and I think in some ways history has forgotten that, and sort of people write off the Radio Shack stuff and the realistic stuff, but particularly in the 70s, man, they were selling some good stuff. Obviously, as far as I know, Radio Shack did not make their own stuff. They contracted contracted the work out to factories in Japan and elsewhere, and they did. I mean, they had some crap, obviously, but they also, crap, like everyone had crap, but they also had some uh, really good stuff. So he says, my main system has Moon Electronics with a Riga turntable and Paradigm speakers. I try to get down to the bunker each afternoon and enjoy both systems. So... Sounds like Glenn is a basement dweller like myself. So welcome to the club, Glenn. Basement dwellers uh, unite. I may have to call my space the bunker as well. So awesome, man. Thank you, Glenn. Thank you for sending your pictures over. I got some more music rooms to show you, but I want to let you know if you are interested in submitting your music space for consideration for a future episode of Vinyl Dens, there's a whole description below this video telling you what I'm looking for and how to submit your picks. So please do check that out. Love vinyl? Tell the world with a Channel 33 RPM t-shirt. Check out the Channel 33 RPM store today. Okay, this comes from Dave. Dave is a Beatles fan. Dave wrote, hey, I'm David Ren Renfrow, Renfrow, and I live in San Angelino, Texas, USA. I've been collecting records and Beatles memorabilia since 1973, 73, the year I was born. He says, I have over 1,000 records, 45s, EPs, and LPs, along with 8-tracks, cassettes, and CDs. So his collection runs the gamut, man. He's uh, He has a variety of mediums here. He says, the centerpiece of my music room is the bar. Check this out. Look at this bar. He says he designed it, and then he had... Did he build this? Let me read that again. The centerpiece of my music room is the bar I designed and had built. So it sounds like he, he envisioned this, but he contracted out the work. If I got that wrong, Dave, I'm sorry. He says, also the guitars, basses, and drums allow me to jam and enjoy a cold one with friends. A couple of my favorite things, jamming, music, beer, friends, can't go wrong. He says, a couple of years ago, we decided to remodel our house and with a new kitchen, I got a brand new room built over the garage for my collection. Dave is like the Fonz, man. You like the Fonz. I love it. He says, but we ran into a problem right at the start, COVID. We had to deal with shortages and our project that was supposed to last about eight months took over 18 months. I was doing some, not really renos, but some work here in the basement during uh, COVID as well. I built a bar in the basement 
and I was waiting for these cupboards to come in from Ikea. And I can attest to the fact that COVID really messed up timelines. He says, every detail of this room was designed by myself, including the placement of the sound system I had in mind. His pride and joy, he says, is his Morant TT 15S1 turntable. Another killer space, man. That, the bar, the, the whole setup. Love the music gear as well. He didn't mention it, but that Marshall stack in the corner looks like a Valve State series. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I used to own a Valve State myself. Again, killer, killer setup. And I just, I'm going to mention it again. I love the fact that it's over the garage. It just gives its own space, right? So I would love to have a setup like that, man. It's awesome. Okay, this next one from Greg. He writes, hello, Frank. I'm 63 and live in Ohio, USA, and started collecting records in 72 at the ripe old age of 12. He says he started with CDs when CDs first came out. He probably has 500 CDs, 500 records in his collection. He also streams. He says, I don't discriminate. I'm kind of the same way as well. Again, speaking strictly for myself, I just, I feel like I'd be closing off so much stuff if I didn't stream because there's more music out there than I can possibly own. So what I don't own or I'm not able to buy, I stream. I know it's not for everyone, so that is totally cool. He says all four of his systems are in the basement and he has another one in his living room. He also says he has a full blown home theater with an emphasis on two channel. I totally appreciate that. I got a movie room in my next room. So it's great to have friends over and just watch movies on the big screen. Okay, check this out. This one comes from Jim in corn country. I don't know where corn country is, but Jim lives in corn country. He writes, uh, hello, Frank. I really enjoy watching your videos, even though when you talk about music or albums, uh, like Kiss, I have no clue. That's okay. A lot of people have no clue about Kiss. He said, my setup started as a lab experiment in 1982 with the old audio amateur and Frank Van Alstein newsletters about how to improve your sound for little money. I love the concept as well. I often call myself not an audiophile, but a frugophile, meaning I try to get the best sound that I can afford. So it makes total sense. He says, I bought the speakers in 1990 before returning to college and they cost me only a few hundred less than my new back to school Toyota Tercel. The VPI Mark IV came along in 1997 with a TNT platter, standalone motor and rewired arm. Uh, and it's as good as a turntable as I'll ever need, he writes. I totally can see that, man. The turntable looks freaking awesome. He says, on a good night, the system can sound frightening. And fright, ladies and gentlemen, the level of fright in your system is uh, an awesome way to rank your listening experience. All right, 33ers, hope you dug this video. If you did, I would appreciate a quick thumbs up. I also have a whole playlist of tons of other Vinyl Dance episodes. There's a link here. You should check it out. I'll see you there in a couple of minutes. Till then, keep on spinning.